everybody and welcome to episode 3 of the Van Build series. We're continuing on with the bodywork and getting the windows out of the van. So to do that, we had to cut out the weather stripping that surrounds the window and basically push the window out of the van. Then we removed the old weather stripping and cleaned up the outside of where the window mounts. Then we moved on to the rear windows. Those were a little bit trickier. Basically, they're urethaned into the van, so effectively, it's a tough glue epoxy that's used to stick the windows in, and the reason that we wanted to take all the windows out is because we've got new windows that have vents in them, basically, so we can open the windows by sliding them to one side or the other and allow air to move back and forth through the van. So, we tried several different ways to get the rear windows out. Uh, we tried to chisel in under the urethane, we tried to use a razor blade to get under the urethane, uh, we resorted to pouring acetone onto the urethane in hopes that it would break down the, the bond, but unfortunately none of that really let the windows free of the van. So we took the rubber hammer and tried to tap them out and it turns out when you tap them out they come out in about 5,000 pieces so basically we ended up just breaking both of the windows and cleaning up the mess once we were done effectively um, it was pretty big mess uh, there was glass everywhere but it was a pretty quick way to to get them out um, so the problem with that was though once we had broken them out there was still glass that was urethane to the van. Now it was only a thin strip around the outside, but we still had to basically chisel out the urethane that was still glued to the van. Um, and so we started at it with regular chisels and hammers, and then tried putty knives and hammers so we could try to get under the urethane better, and eventually we resorted to using an air chisel to just air chisel the urethane off of the van and that turned out to be the most effective way it just kind of zipped right through it uh, we did have a couple places where the air chisel kind of dug into the metal but fortunately the windows that we we're um, putting in they don't use the same size opening so we're going to trim out a slight bit of the opening and hopefully trim out the areas that we messed up in order to get the the new windows to fit when they come in once we got all the urethane out, we then had to clean up all the glass that had flown everywhere when we effectively busted the windows out of the back of the van. And so once we got the windows out, we then moved to trying to reinforce the door. Because basically, the way the door shut, you kind of have to slam them. And when you do that, you tend to push on the middle of the door. And there's really no reinforcement in the middle of the door to keep the door panel from bending in. So over the years of being shut over and over and over, the door panel kind of caved in in the door. And so since we were going to the extent of doing the bodywork and filling all the low places and basically getting it prepped for paint, we decided to go ahead and weld in some reinforcements in the rear doors, kind of similar to what we did in the, the second episode where we reinforced the sliding door it kind of had the same problem where when you people had shut it over the years it had caved in that door as well but most of that was due to the fact that the latch wasn't adjusted right and it just really needed to be adjusted so the door closed properly but as for the rear doors they um, they don't really line up perfectly uh, but they were close enough to where they really if you shut them normally it shouldn't have caved the door in but over the years I guess it had been slammed one too many times and had been caved in. So basically we bent a couple of supports and welded them in between the inner frame of the door and the outer frame of the door and reinforced that area so when you do close the door now it will have a, a solid area that you can effectively push against and it won't cause that panel to flex. And one reason that we're kind of sensitive to the panels flexing is that once you put Bondo on them to try to smooth them out, if there is any flex, you run the risk of the Bondo cracking and therefore the top coat of the paint will crack. And then from there, it's just a, a chain reaction of 
basically have to strip the door down and repaint it again. So we really wanted to try to make the panels as stiff as we could to try to eliminate as much of that flexing movement as we could on the outside so that over the long term the paint would not crack due to the Bondo being there. And it, it really took a lot of time to weld in all the panels and I mean at the same time we were like pushing the concave dent back out so it's like a, a push and shove basically of trying to get it lined up perfectly sometimes pushing it a little too far and then having to push it back and then all the time welding and every time you weld you heat up the door and that can cause it to flex and warp so it was kind of a, a struggle to get everything to line up just how we wanted to and make sure that the door sh still shut once we had welded everything onto it. And so once we got the, the doors reinforced from inside out, we started looking at how they aligned with each other and we found that one door was slightly more concave than the other. And so we decided that we would try to basically bend that door back out. And it just happened to be that the passenger side door was the one that was really too far concave and so we tried to straighten it with a 2x6, but the door in that area is surprisingly rigid, and so basically the 2x6 just kind of bent to the shape of the door and didn't really straighten the door at all. And the main reason that we're focusing on this area is because when the door shut, there would be a gap basically in the middle where dust and water and basically air, anything would get into the van because the door didn't seal in the middle. So we're trying to achieve like a uniform fit from top to bottom so that way the, the door seal compresses all the way and keeps the rear door sealed completely no matter or what weather conditions we're driving through at the time. It's basically rain, snow, dust, all that stuff like I said before will we'll get in through that crack and the main concern is the bed is going to be in the back so the last thing we want to do is go to get in the bed at night and have a wet, dusty, snow-covered bed <laughs> in the back. So, being as the 2x6 wasn't stiff enough, we tried to use a piece of 2x2 square tube in order to basically pull the uh, door back straight. And surprisingly, even that wasn't enough to get the door to take the shape that we wanted it to get. And I think part of it was the 2x2 square tube wasn't really long enough we really needed to be pulling at the extreme top and bottom of the door in order to make it basically unbend from the center. And now we could have worked on the other door and tried to, to bend it in, because basically the doors just have to match. But from the way that they lined up together, it looked like it would be easier to basically make this door be straighter and leave the other door as it was. So at the end of the day, we decided to just kind of give up on the doors and basically try to attack it later because we were at a point where everything we were trying was really not straightening the door out at all. So we threw in the towel and decided to look at it again the next day. So the next day, there were four holes on the back driver's side of the van basically where there was a reflector or a mirror or something mounted up top and when we bought the van it was just four bolts with rubber grommets that kind of sealed it off so we decided that we were going to patch the holes and weld them up and make it where you could not never tell that anything was there. There are a couple places of bodywork that were right next to where the rear bumper was mounted so in order to be able to sand right up next to those areas and not scuff the bumper up we decided to go ahead and take the rear bumper off. Basically there's two caps on the driver and passenger side that kind of go around the bumper and you have to remove those first and then the bumper itself is basically just pops onto a plastic piece that bolts to the rear of the van and there's just two big bolts with big nuts and washers that hold that plastic piece on and what we found is it looks like someone had either been in an accident or possibly backed into something in the van because one of the bolts had been 
basically re-welded back into where it was supposed to be and was much shorter than the other side when we ended up taking it off. The other thing that we had to remove was the bottom striker plate on the rear door because it covered up the where the plastic bumper bolted onto the van. And what we found is there was a lot of glass in the bumper from where we had removed the, the rear windows in about 500,000 pieces. So we did all that and then we got ready to weld up the holes that were in the top of the van. And so we had to cut some sheet metal and make patches that went behind the holes. Because the, the sheet metal on the van is relatively thin, so we found that it's kind of difficult to weld and basically just fill the holes because you end up burning through before you can ever really get enough weld buildup to, to fill the entire hole. So we decided to cut some sheet metal sheets and stick them behind the holes and basically just tack the sheet metal on and then fill in the hole with the sheet metal backing. And having that extra piece of sheet metal back there just made it 50 times easier to fill in the hole because the heat dissipates away from the weld through the extra thickness of the sheet metal that's behind it. So we got the welder set up and welded the holes solid and then we came back with the grinder with the flapper disc on it and basically smoothed out all the metal there because we knew that we would have to put some bondo over it in order to fill in all the the low spots and high spots created from welding because there's no way to ever get it perfectly smooth when you're adding a lot of material to the van even if even when you grind it down it still never is perfectly flat so we had to, to clean up that area and get it ready for bondo so we could then paint over it and basically smooth it all out so you could never tell it was there the paint was pretty thick in this area so we ended up taking off a good amount of paint so we could feather in the bondo better and you would see less of a seam as you're basically covering up the welds later so the next thing we did is we tried to to relook at how we could possibly straighten the doors and basically the, the method that we ended up trying was taking a sledgehammer and a 4x4 block of wood and effectively just beating the door into place with the sledgehammer. So I was a little skeptical of it actually working but my dad convinced me that we should try it and within a couple of hits of the sledgehammer it was pretty clear that the, the gap was closing up and so basically we just moved the 4x4 block of wood up and down the van as we hit it with the sledgehammer and that formed the door into the shape that it needed to be to mate up with the, the driver's side door and once we put the weather stripping back on surprisingly it sealed up almost perfectly and in order to get the last little bit bent we had to put a 2x4 in the top and bottom of the door and hit the center to basically take out that concave shape even more so than we were able to do with just the door being closed. So after we got done beating on the door with the sledgehammer we checked the alignment a couple of times in a couple different ways and as we were doing that we started to notice all the little imperfections in the rear doors themselves. And that's something I'm slowly learning is that as you do the body work, you tend to always find spots that you didn't catch on the previous round that you were working on. So we took a block of wood and basically beat the spots out from the inside. And the other thing we learned is the two little catches that have magnets in them that basically hold the doors against the side of the van when they're always open, all the way open those tend to cause the doors to create a dent as well. I guess when they're let go and they kind of slam against the side of the van on the magnet, it's a high stress concentration area where there's a lot of load in that one place and it tends to make the door bend. So we took a hammer and some boards and beat those sections back out as flat as we could, got them as close as we could, and we realized that there was actually a tear in one of the doors in that area where the sheet metal had just physically started. It was like opening a tin can, basically. It just started to rip. So we cleaned it off, 
and we thought we could just weld the seam shut but it was pretty clear pretty quick that that was not going to work because the metal was so thin in that area that it basically just melted away really really quickly so what we ended up having to do is make another plate to go behind it and basically reinforce it with a, a steel plate so we'd have a little more uh, material to weld to in that area on the van. So we took our sheet metal, cut it out, and stuck it back behind the, the door there and welded it in. And one of the other complicated parts was that there was holes there that hold the magnet on. So once we had that piece welded in, we ended up having to re-drill those holes and try to get them in the same exact place as they were before we had welded in the metal plate behind the, the door there. And it actually took a couple of times of trial and error of holding that plate in there and getting it started because the, the metal wasn't the cleanest and the weld didn't really want to stick at first. So we ended up cutting out a second piece to stick in there as well and held it in and got it welded in there and it took two pieces to to fill the space but once it was filled we welded the entire thing solid and then cleaned it all off with the uh, flapper disc on the sander and it actually smoothed out fairly well uh, a lot lot better than I was thinking that it would and then we re-drilled the holes in it and after that it was pretty much ready for Bondo the one hole it really didn't want to drill straight the the bit kept walking and I was worried that the whole pattern was gonna spread out too much but eventually the the hole popped through and it was centered enough that the latch would go back on so we got all the, the work finished on the rear doors and they ended up not looking as bad as we thought they were gonna look and we were ready to move on to the next step. So the next step involved caulking the rain gutter, but first we had to clean it out so we'd have a nice clean surface to caulk against. And we we're hoping by priming the top of it first that the primer would kind of find its way into the nooks and crannies and give the caulk a good surface to bond against. The other thing we did is we wiped it down with acetone in order to get have our best shot at getting it to adhere well and as far as the caulk goes we decided to use a marine grade uh, 5200 sealant and the reason that we chose that is because of its flexibility it's made to go in boats where you're bonding fiberglass to wood or metal to fiberglass or metal to wood and the joints in boats typically have a little bit of flexure to them so it's not a, a rigid like it's not a welded joint that you're trying to seal together and so on the roof and especially the rain gutter the van is always flexing in some way or another so we wanted to try to counteract that and use a sealant that could basically stand up to the movement and so far I've used the 5200 on some other projects we did a truck camper shell that I basically sealed every seam on that thing with 5200 and it never leaked once after that so I've got a lot of a lot of faith that it'll it'll do the job so we did the seams on the roof and then we moved to the rain gutter and basically filled the entire rain gutter with 5200 and especially that that driver side rear panel that I'm caulking up here where they had drilled out spot welds and it was really just a rusty mess of silicon sealant when we got the van but we had to clean all that out like you saw in the last video and then we primed it and now we're filling it up with some 5200 and hoping that it doesn't doesn't ever leak again um, but the 5200 it went in the rain gutter really well it actually laid down really smooth and kinda smoothed itself out I just used my finger to get it close and then gravity did the rest so even though the rain gutter was really only messed up in that one panel, we went ahead and ran around, went around the entire van with the 5200 just to ensure that there wouldn't be any leaks in the future. 
So thanks for watching this week's episode of the Van Build Series. If you like what you saw, hit that like button. If you have any questions or comments, drop those below. And if you're ready for more, hit that subscribe button and we'll be back next week with another episode.